Um, when it comes to collecting energy, uh, one of the, the main things we, we are looking for is a, is a sound uh, legal basis uh, <clears throat> to do so. Because uh, this, by, by using, uh, you know, uh, regulatory laws, you, you make sure that uh, administrations have uh, an obligation, a legal binding to, to submitting this data. But uh, this is not sufficient uh, on itself. Uh, you need also to collaborate with, uh, with people involved to make sure that everyone knows uh, his or her responsibilities and uh, uh, gets along in terms of, uh, of, of roles and, and what to do. So there is a lot of uh, you know, uh, interaction, collaboration and discussions. And uh, the next step uh, in, in this process is to decide uh, in terms of mechanisms how uh, data should be collected. So the means used uh, usually are questionnaires. We have to decide on uh, what kind of data is being collected, uh, the different flows and who will be responsible of uh, <clears throat> collecting this data uh, at what uh, frequency. Uh, and when you do this kind of uh, you know, designing of the data that you collect, you also, you also should always bear in mind that um, Whatever additional you, you try to implement, you also have to allocate resources to it. Uh, you have to make sure that uh, um, the, the, the requirements can be met and uh, people are in a position to do this collection and also can uh, work on validating this data before they disseminate it. Uh, so this brings us to the concept of uh, cost. So whatever you try to, to implement uh, in, in addition to what currently exists, uh, has uh, an incurred cost, and uh, you should always, uh, you know, um, do this uh, assessment of cost and benefits in 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 uh, adding something new. So obviously there is a cost in doing something new, but you can also have sometimes a cost in uh, not doing something. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that you might have, uh, you know, um, like a potential uh, gains in, in efficiency, for instance, or or whatever. Uh, um, and and if you don't if you don't collect the data, you do not have this information. You cannot put in place the new measures, and you actually uh, also pay a sort of price by not doing it. Um, yeah, when you try to implement those new things, you very often uh, face obstacles. Um, those those obstacles, those challenges, they're mostly due due to the liberalization of energy markets. Um, in, in the past, there were many, uh, well, there were, there were much uh, less uh, uh, flows involved in, in, in energy markets. It was easier to collect the information at the country level. Now you have many more sources involved. Uh, you have much more competition, so that can also lead to confidentiality issues. And uh, as we mentioned before, uh, the growing number of, uh, of data points also means that you need uh, to adapt the resources that you allocate to the, the processes to collect this information. Uh, so sometimes there is simply not enough you know, uh, resources in, in, uh, in uh, administrations or not enough budget, or the fact that uh, people working on those topics tend to, to, to change a lot. So there is not enough uh, build up in terms of uh, knowledge and experience you know, to, to, to develop uh, like uh, over time uh, uh, good statistics. Um, yeah, so I think for the main features, uh, this is it. We try to represent uh, what we call the data chain. So a data chain is basically all the steps that uh, take place from the, the energy action. So the, the physical reality that is going to translate into a data point. There is an information that, uh, that uh, has to, you know, to take place at, the, at this point. And then uh, all the steps that take you uh, to the the, the final data user of this information. So initially what happens is that you have a, well, a physical reality, some, some fossil fuel is being produced or you try to convert an energy form into another one. And uh, this, okay, so this translates into, into an information and uh, it's being collected at the primary level by, uh, by countries. So it's being measured or uh, through surveys or another uh, source of data. Uh, the country does uh, the aggregation and then uh, communicates it to the secondary uh, data collection framework, which are uh, international organizations. Uh, you've seen a couple of them in, in previous presentations already. The IEA is one of them. And then there is some work that's being done here again in terms of aggregation and uh, validation of the data. 
And in turn, this is being disseminated to, to data users that, uh, as you can see, are very uh, various and, and different. You can have people, well, you have almost policymakers basically who shape up uh, their, their, their policies based on this information. You also have people doing research in academia. You have uh, people uh, using this information with uh, uh, commercial uh, perspectives uh, and, and so on. Um, so all this uh, value chain um, has a very important aspect uh, that we want to highlight here is that you find many stakeholders throughout the value chain. As you can see here, uh, there are many interactions and with the growing number of, uh, of, of data and information, it's, uh, it's very essential. I'm almost done. It's very essential that um, uh, you can move smoothly from one point to another. So what we really wanted to highlight is the, the importance of collaboration to the extent that you can no longer focus only on, on one part of the chain, on only one stakeholder uh, that might have detailed information at his level, but when you want to have the, the entire picture of, of uh, what's going on, you really need to aggregate and consolidate uh, all the information. So that's why uh, collaboration is key to, to that extent. Um, now, I just would like to uh, have a short, uh, you know, menti question. The idea here is to, uh, to ask you with which uh, institutions you, you do collaborate. So uh, take a second to, to go on the, on the website and, uh, and, uh, and enter the answer to this question. Uh, I'll try to share it as well. So let's double screen. So bear with me, I'm trying to share the, the answers. Let me know if you want me to share the answers, Louis. Yeah, I, do you have access to it? I don't seem to. Yes, you just need to stop sharing your screen, please. Okay. Should be good now. So everyone, um, if you go to 3w.menti.com and you use the code 60491269, then you are able to enter the, question, the answer to the question. Louis, do you see my screen? No. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, you, sh you should turn off your screen. Louis, did you stop sharing? Yes, right now, sorry for that. Oh, yeah, I think the code. Okay, there, there seemed to be an issue with the code. I just put it in the chat, sorry, sorry for that. So we see the first answers coming in. It's a good first answer. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I think we should stop there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so again, the, the point here is really to highlight uh, the diversity of, of uh, stakeholders like uh, who intervene uh, throughout the, the data chain and um, highlight the, the importance of uh, every one of them. You basically cannot reconcile the entire picture if you're missing uh, the, part, the part of the chain. So, well, as, as you can see, well, there's a lot of idea, I guess, but as you can see, you have, you have many different names. I don't know all of them. Uh, some are quite generic, some are more specific, but this, the, yeah, this really highlights the, this, this uh, diversity. <clears throat> I think we can, uh, we can move on to the next section. Section. Uh, I'll take over again the screen sharing if that's okay. Oh, 
Okay. So yeah, the code was wrong. Sorry for that. Okay, so we've seen the, the main features of the, the collection uh, system and uh, now we try- Sorry, we don't see this, the PowerPoint. We see the presenter view. Okay. Bear with me. Is it fine this time? Well, we still uh, have the... No, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. It's fine? Okay. Yes. So, sorry. Uh, okay, so now we try to, to look at the different type of information that we can collect uh, in, in this collection framework. Um, so when it, when it comes to, to energy, you, you always have this dichotomy between supply and demand, and it's uh, the same in terms of data collection you have on the supply side. Uh, companies and, and industries who contribute, you know, to, to producing or generating trade flows and so on. Um, so we, we use the surveys and uh, when available uh, administration data to, to um, uh, reconcile uh, the information and have a, a broad picture of the, the country's balance. On the, the consumption side, uh, the, the work is a bit more complex because of the, the nature of the flows and that um, the number of, uh, you know, again, stakeholders involved in, in on the consumption uh, activities. Uh, so we also use uh, surveys at this time targeted to, to households and enterprises uh, involved in consumption. And um, here we also need uh, to have a more integrated approach uh, overall uh, by relying not only on surveys that we design, uh, also on administrative data, but sometimes also uh, we need to fill the gaps and uh, resort to estimation and modeling of, of the missing information. So I'll go a bit more in detail in, uh, in the, the next couple of slides uh, in terms of uh, what uh, surveys and administration data we, we can collect. Um, yeah, so administrative data, I think that the, the name is quite uh, self-explanatory, is, is data that is being uh, managed by uh, governments uh, and that, uh, well, can be done by public or private companies on behalf of governments. But the, the idea here is that uh, this data is already being collected by, by a third party. So when you think uh, in terms of collection, uh, you don't need to design anything new and implement it. It's already being done by someone else. So this is an advantage because uh, it, it's it's uh, slighter in terms of uh, you know uh, work that you have to input in, in designing the, the framework and, and doing the, the work. At the same time, uh, one of the main drawbacks is going to be that you might uh, develop a dependency on, on the third party that does the work of collecting this data. Um, in terms, yeah, in terms of uh, of pros and cons. So as I just said, uh, it lowers the burden of the collection procedure, but it might also develop a dependency. And uh, even though you find a lot of information in those administrative data, it, uh, it isn't always necessarily in, in the right uh, format or shape that you need it to be. You might have differences in the definitions, in the coverage. Actually, it's pretty much uh, always the case. So even though it avoids you know, uh, doing the work uh, twice and, and, uh, and putting more uh, uh, resources uh, to doing it, a, there is still a need to put some effort in uh, in um, matching this with with what we really want to see. And uh, uh, yeah, so it's it's not it's not that straightforward. Uh, you need to integrate it to the framework. Um, yeah, companies that contribute to to you know administrative data uh, can be metering. Com uh, well, metering companies who collect the, the data when they when they supply energy to to consumers or uh, all the, the companies that are involved in those activities uh, usually report to, to a, a, an authority. And uh, by doing so, they have the obligation to report uh, statistics on, on their activity. So that's also a source of information that's uh, very useful. Um, in terms of surveys this time, we distinguish two main types of service, enterprise service and household service. Um, yeah, here, uh, in terms of uh, enterprise service, it's, uh, it's very important because um, it, uh, it helps us to, to track uh, overtime consumption and also to derive 
metrics in terms of uh, efficiency or um, to 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 model and, and derive uh, est estimations of the greenhouse gases emissions and uh, other you know other indicators that can help tracking uh, the impact uh, of uh, policy measures that have been put in place. Um, yeah. On the household end, you distinguish three types of information that you try to collect. Uh, first, obviously, uh, in terms of end use energy consumption. So we try to collect uh, information about the, the heating for uh, space, water, uh, and so on, um, cooking, and, and etc. But uh, you also want to have additional information in terms of the, the housing stock itself. Uh, what kind of structure we're talking about in terms of buildings, uh, what's the, the age of the thing, uh, what kind of insulation it has, and so on. And finally, you also want to collect information about the, the household, uh, the, the people who live there, uh, what's the size, uh, what's the, the profile in terms of income, uh, uh, what uh, is the occupation intensity, and so on, all this kind of information. Um, yeah, finally, when uh, using those data sources, uh, something I, I briefly mentioned in introduction is the sometimes you face uh, confidentiality issues. Um, put simply, it is the, the issue that you might face when uh, by disseminating statistical information, you give the possibility to some data users to back engineer uh, the information in in terms of uh, economics and commercially speaking. So they can, they can derive uh, information uh, if there are competitors and, and things like that. And some companies uh, actually um, are against, uh, you know, sharing this data for those reasons. So most of the time we would try to, to come up with a solution uh, to make sure that we can still access this information that is available and that exists, uh, but in a, in a way that prevents people from, from doing what I just said. Um, yeah, finally, uh, in this section, data quality. Uh, so this was uh, already introduced, I think, in, in Nick's introduction earlier. Uh, but when we collect data, we don't try to collect everything that we can just for the, the sake of it. Uh, there is always um, the, the idea that uh, the data collected should be useful uh, in terms of uh, final users. And whenever you think of a data point, you should also uh, ask yourself, is, is this going to be useful? So the characteristics we try to, to make sure that we have are first the relevance. So is it going to be useful? But even though the data point you collected is relevant, uh, is it accurate and reliable? If, if it's uh, most of the time like uh, far from uh, the reality, uh, it's not very usable. So it might not be a good thing to eventually collect this data point. Also in terms of timeliness, if the data you collect is relevant and accurate and reliable, but still you, you only get the data point 20 years after the energy action took place, uh, it might be questionable to know if it's worth putting resources in collecting this data point. Um, accessibility and clarity here, uh, the thing is that the data we disseminate, we want it to be understandable. And that's why uh, it's very important to, to publish it along with metadata and, and uh, other methodological notes that help understanding what's going on. Uh, and finally, coherence and comparability. As uh, one of the final uses of this data, most of the time is to you know, derive uh, policies and, and this kind of work. And um, uh, if you want uh, to, to be able to derive uh, robust and solid conclusions, you also need to have this comparability across uh, regions and across time. So those are the the five uh, main things that we look for when we collect data. Um, at, the, at the bottom of this slide, you have some sources of information where you can find additional uh, you know, guidance uh, in terms of method methodology, definitions. And uh, yeah, I invite you to, to consult them should you, should you want to do so. Um, 